In this video, we review reasons why you shouldn't use Enter Domain Services as a replacement for Windows AD. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. In this video, we review Microsoft's three directory services, Windows AD, Enter ID, and Enter Domain Services, and then discuss why Enter Domain Services should not be used as a replacement for Windows AD. And stick around to the end where we look at use cases Enter Domain Services was intended for. Before that, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, and Getting Started with Windows 365 and Intune Management on Udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Enter Domain Service is a Windows AD compatible service hosted in Azure. Let's quickly review how Microsoft's three directory services relate to each other. First, we have Windows AD, the on-premises directory service we've all known and loved for the past 24 years. Windows AD supports Kerberos and NTLM authentication and other services like LDAP, DNS, and group policies. Then we have EntrID, the cloud-based directory service hosted by Microsoft. It's the directory service for Microsoft online services like Office 365 and Azure. It supports OpenID Connect, OAuth 2, and SAML for web-based authentication. And then we have Enter Domain Services. This is the Windows AD compatible service hosted by Microsoft. Just like Windows AD, it supports Kerberos and NTLM for authentication and other services like LDAP, DNS, and group policies. We can replicate identities, groups, and devices from Windows AD to Enter ID with Enter Connect Sync. This creates hybrid identities or hybrid joint devices. We can also create cloud-native identities in EntraID. Identities can also replicate from EntraID to Entra Domain Services, or we can have identities native to Entra Domain Services. I have a video that goes into more detail on the differences between these three services. The link is on the screen and below if you want to take a look and learn more. Now that we know the high-level differences between the three, let's move on to the main topic, why I don't recommend using Enter Domain Services to replace Windows AD. Let's consider the reasons why someone may want to use Enter Domain Services instead of Windows AD. First, an organization may want to stop managing domain controllers. There's overhead in that. Servers need to be patched and upgraded with the newest OS version. Enter Domain Services takes care of all that for us, including managing backups. Or an organization may want to go cloud only, getting rid of the legacy on-premises infrastructure. Enter Domain Services is a way to move Windows AD to the cloud. Finally, an organization may be small and not see the need for running domain controllers, but still needs Active Directory domain services in that environment. In each case, something in the environment requires services that Windows AD and Enter Domain Services provide, maybe file and print shares, or an application requires Active Directory domain services authentication with Kerberos or NTLM. Okay, so what's the harm in using a managed service hosted in Azure to replace Windows AD? Well, first, we're not getting away from Active Directory Domain Services and the legacy authentication protocols, Kerberos and NTLM. We're just delegating management of the domain controllers. That's not bad, but I've seen many organizations go down this path only to run into the limitations of Enter Domain Services. Let's look at some of the shortcomings of Enter Domain Services. At the top of that list is no enterprise or domain admin account. With Enter Domain Services, we get a group called AAD DC Administrators with sufficient permissions to manage aspects of Enter Domain Services like users, devices, and groups, but we don't get access to the domain or enterprise admin account. Big deal, right? We can manage what we need, so who cares? Well, this has a ripple effect on limitations. Do you need certificate services or federation with ADFS? Both those and other Windows services require a domain admin account to install the service. No certificate services means no smart card authentication. Enter domain services does not support smart card authentication. Next is no support for hybrid Enter ID joined computers. A computer can be Active Directory domain services joined, either Windows AD or Enter domain services, or join to Enter ID. Let's review the image I showed earlier. If we have a device that's a member of a Windows AD domain, we can replicate that to Enter ID with Enter Connect Sync to create a hybrid Enter ID join device. 
it's represented in two directories. Notice there's no arrow going from enter domain services to enter ID. Devices joined to enter domain services cannot be hybrid enter ID joined. That requires enter connect sync and enter connect sync is not supported with enter domain services. Devices joined to enter domain services cannot be used with services that require the devices to be enter ID joined or hybrid joined like universal print or using devices as part of a conditional access policy. A significant limitation of devices joined to enter domain services is no Intune enrollment. The device is never represented in enter ID, so it can never be enrolled in Intune. The device can still be registered just like a user's personal device, but auto enrollment is not an option. Also, extending the directory schema is not supported with enter domain services. That rules out any application that requires a schema extension, either Microsoft or third party. Need exchange attributes in an AD schema? That's not an option with enter domain services. We can join our on-premises Windows clients to enter domain services just like we can with Windows AD, but that requires a private VPN or ExpressRoute connection from our on-premises location to the enter domain services subnet in Azure. Enter domain services is not publicly available like enter ideas. We would never expose Active Directory domain services to the internet. The same goes for Windows AD and enter domain services. Remember why we put domain controllers in remote and branch offices? To speed up logins and process logins if the WAN connection goes down. Although we can join on-premises computers to enter domain services, we can't add local domain controllers to an enter domain services directory. It's not supported and we don't have a domain or enterprise admin account to add one. Another point, if the plan is to use enter domain services and on-premises clients, the computers need to use an enter domain service aware DNS. This is the private IP of the enter domain services domain controllers that Microsoft manages. If the WAN connection goes down, not only will access to enter domain services be offline, but so will internet access without connectivity to DNS. Solutions like conditional forwarders deployed on-prem to maintain DNS are available, but that adds to the complexity of the deployment. Managing DNS is not everyone's favorite thing to do. Another item to note, if we go back to the three directory services again, we have three different namespaces. Enter domain services is a separate forest and domain from other directories. We can pass user IDs and even password hashes between them. We can even give them the same domain name, although that would be a DNS nightmare, but they're different directories. A user created in the enter domain services domain is a foreign entity to Windows AD or enter ID. Moving on, enter domain services only supports a one-way outbound trust. Enter domain services can trust other domains and users in those domains can access resources in enter domain services, but it doesn't work in the other direction. If you don't plan on using trust, this limitation may not seem like a big deal. However, an IT department may not be aware of plans for mergers and acquisitions. Organizations that need to share resources during the mergers, acquisitions, or partnerships frequently leverage two-way trust relationships to share resources. This is not an option with enter domain services. Also, if you're using Azure Virtual Desktop, MSIX App Attach is not supported with enter domain services. There's a new version just called App Attach in preview at the time of this recording that removes that limitation, but for now, MSIX App Attach is not supported with enter domain services. Let's move on to availability. There's a high availability option with enter domain services called replica sets. This is a second instance of enter domain services with a copy of the directory. Think of this as another site in a Windows 80 domain. However, all replica sets have to be in the same subscription. Also, enter domain services can't be moved to another subscription or tenant. And finally, the biggest reason I see to avoid enter domain services as a replacement for Windows 80 is there's no backup plan. These limitations may not be a consideration now, but as the number of users and applications grow, so does the dependency on the service. There's a potential to be impacted by one of these limitations in the future. If that happens, there's no way to migrate to Windows 80 gracefully. You can't even lean on domain trust relationships because enter domain services only supports a one-way trust. 
The only option is to export users groups and rebuild the domain into Windows AD. So with all these limitations, what is it for? Microsoft spells it out nicely in the overview section of the Enter Domain Service documentation. It's for legacy applications that require Kerberos or NTLM authentication. If those are moved into Azure, we can leverage Enter Domain Services for authentication. That way we avoid having to add our organization's Windows AD directory to Azure or have lookups go back to our organization's Active Directory. As a managed service with Entra ID integration, it's a good choice for supporting those legacy applications, but it was not intended to replace Windows AD. Another use case I've seen is for LDAP support. If you don't have Windows AD and have an application or service that requires LDAP, Entra Domain Services can provide that functionality. A better option though would be to remove the dependency on LDAP. And my final word on this, it's inexpensive and relatively easy to stand up a couple B-series VMs in Azure and use them for Windows AD, either standalone or as part of an existing forest and domain. The VMs can be deployed in multiple regions and subscriptions, and the price is likely less or close to that of an Entra ID instance. Yes, you have to manage and patch the OS, but we remove those limitations of Entra domain services and future-proof our deployment. Before I go, Things change rapidly in the cloud. Please see my accompanying blog post for updated information. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.